Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConnor Man at YouTube with another model video. Today, unboxing, building, painting, and reviewing the Type 5 Amphibious Fighting Vehicle ZTD05, current Chinese PLA, for Navy and Marine Corps, for amphibious landing, troop carrying, rolled out in 2005. Produced out of styrene by 4D models in 172nd scale. Across three runners, five components and a few small metal bits and pieces. It is a pre-coloured snap kit already with insignia and markings. Transformable and articulated in transport and landing mode. This was purchased for about $10, $12, which is getting a bit more expensive, but larger and accurate, elaborate. Sadly, only contained a plastic bag and instructions. This was recently released this year. This kit will be constructed using traditional scale model building and finishing methods with basic tools such as side cutters, a hobby knife, sandpaper. I will be relying off plastic cement to adhere everything together rather than the snap fit functions. The kit also contains multiple hinged components for open and closed doors and hatches which can have the addition of figures. I'll also be gluing these down. The model was injection molded in a clean quality Soviet green plastic with less imperfections and faults. Nothing in the way of sink marks or ejector pin like previous offerings but there is still some flash and nubs to be removed. Nothing too difficult. Details a bit simplistic and very chunky. A bit of a callback to older Airfix Matchbox kits. A lot more closer and akin to a scale model than a toy with a nicer detail and bits like the gun barrel drilled out and mesh basket for the turret where the first generation of kits emitted all of this. Stowage machine guns and smoke launchers are still a bit comically large but this gives it more of a wargaming feeling. Snap fits, fits nicely and holds together. The articulated points rely on a metal hinge pre-glued together. The model is a much larger parts count, but the instructions are still clear and very easy to follow. Lots of play value with the turret and ramp doors swinging up and down. I found the back one to have break easily, though it is simple enough to glue together. Instructions are on A4 sheet and very easy to follow in several comic style panels. Uh, no English translations, but text is very minimal. This is a very large tank and a pretty big model. Portion scale and detail looks very appropriate to the source material. I intentionally kept the model in two halves for painting as there was no obvious seams with the armor overlap. Automotive grade filler primer thinned with lacquer thinner was applied via a 0.5mm airbrush. One of the components the paint cracked due to some oily film on it. That aside, perfect adhesion and no obvious imperfections appeared. Next after drying was multiple layers of automotive paint. I used a dark green that's very similar to Soviet green from the North Korean tank video, thinned with automotive leveling thinner. I've downscaled to a smaller plastic air compressor and generally go with a low 12, 15 to 11 PSI and dust everything on to prevent running or wet buildup. To have a variety of my other Russian and Eastern tanks, I do three tones of a lighter mixed green with the same dark green and a highlight of a hobby brand. This gives definition, shading and scale. Experimenting with my new airbrush cover caps, I was able to do even finer lines than normal for the camouflage tone. Reference material was found on the first page of Google results of this armored personnel fighting vehicle. Other details such as the rubber on the tires, tank tracks, smoke launches, stowage, machine gun and whatnot was hand painted again with lacquer paints and a fine brush. 
This can be a bit thick and streakly, though its advantage is once after drying, the paint can reactivate. It was dusted with a heavy coat of lacquer thinner through an airbrush and no paint. This made it self level. Digging through my collection of surplus and aftermarket decals, I found these wargaming red stars in various shapes, which was ideal to stick on the turret and hull, and with a slight amount of yellow paint, drew the 8 1 symbol plus the unit number next to it. For further definition and detail, Tamir black panel line accent color was further thinned down with gum tips and sludge washed throughout the whole surface. After 24 hours of drying, thinned down lacquer matte flat was dusted on in a few coats across the whole model to dull any glossiness and sheen. Once that dried, the two hull pieces were adhered together with super glue at the snap points. It was a bit on the easy side, and it is a little bit of a simpler model, but for what it is and the very little I paid for, with the very little stress added in building it, I had a ton of fun and thoroughly enjoyed this build and model. The subject is rich, interesting, and not very well represented in what is mostly popular in the armored fighting vehicle range and scale. Plus 4D is not normally taken seriously due to its very early and dodgy offerings. With every year that's passed, 4D has just gotten from strength to strength and every generation of armor models that has been released has been a complete different take on the hobby quality process and subject matter. In the last couple of years, going more so for the very basic airfix matchbox scale modeling side of things, yet still quick, simplistic, and pre colored for wargaming education and general toy playability, it's no longer something to be disrespected and seriously looked at. I would definitely be recommending it and buying future offerings. In the way of my effort, I'm happy enough with it. This is a mental build between other projects. Some points I have been a bit lazy with, though fairly happy with how it's come out and more than pleased in adding it to my greater growing collection of various armor. Thank you very much for watching and as always until next time, stay tuned for further content. Check out the description section for references, links and further information. If this is the first video you've watched, I've got playlists on the channel covering all the genres and styles of models I've built, including a large selection of 4D throughout its history and different qualities. The subscription, liking, commenting really helps out, much appreciated and very interested in what you guys have to say or find interesting about this. Thank you very much and catch you guys next time. See you later.